and gentlemen, Michael Palmazano here, and uh, I'm on Instagram the other day, and Natasha Kornblatt, who goes around, takes a lot of concert footage, here's a little screenshot, bam, put it up there, uh, posted a video of Philip Sace, I believe that's how I say your name, um, now I know of Philip, Philip is a bad man, but I don't think I've ever reviewed um, any of his uh, songs in full on this channel. We've done a bunch on our Tuesday night live streams. Um, so, like for example, I'm I'm on my website. I just punched in his last name. We got five from Nathan, DT Lee, Francois, Tom, Thomas Murphy. Thank you all for being subscribers on the site. Uh, but Natasha, I'm going to do this video she just got from the Dallas Guitar Festival. Uh, 43022, the song is Once. And the reason I found Natasha is because I just sat in with Daniel Donato and she posted a video of that performance. I had no idea anybody was even recording it um, uh, besides us. Um, and so I'm going to release that in full with board audio when I get that from Daniel, maybe a snippet from my buddy John. John, thank you so much. Um, so Natasha, this is for you. Guys, please check out the link in the description. Check out her channel. She's got Tons of great performance material. Please give her a sub. Do it for me. Philip, let's go. See, see what we have here. Oh, yeah. And I remember when I made this video or when I posted it or when I first saw it, rather, um, it was me, Philip, and my buddy Anthony from Texas Blue Al uh, Blues Alley that commented. So you know if Anthony likes it, you know it's real blues. So let's play this song. This song I wrote for my dad a little while ago who passed away real suddenly. It was terrible. And uh, I'm still feeling him every day, every day. And he knew how much this part of the world meant to me. It means to me, the music that comes from here, the people, the culture, the food, mm. the vibes. And so uh, I invite him to be here with us tonight. And I also invite this to anybody to hold in your heart, anybody you may have lost that you really care about, we'll send this song out to them right now, okay? Could be an animal. Could be a friend, could be anyone, especially over these last two years, right? Yeah, man. He's got that smile like he's ready to roll. Real quick, I can tell I can tell he's in full flow right now. Um, man, single coils, the Univibe, just jacked tube amp sound, man. Um, you know whether it's Hendrix, Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know that 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 thing, man. That's just that's when you come out and you and you strut like this in a three piece. I mean, you gotta you you gotta have it all the way. You know what I'm saying? Um, harmony wise. He's in E flat. I'm tuned to E. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't learn this beforehand or anything. So basically, um, you got a six chord. It looks like C sharp minor. It sounds like C minor. <laughs> to a four chord, looks like A. Uh, it's actually A flat, right? To a one, which is E flat. Now I can't get that down here with the open E string, but I can get it like that. And he does this little run. That little E flat major, one, two, three, five, six, one. All you out there, you gotta know that one, two, three, five, six, that major pentaton. For your rhythm playing. Get that first inversion, right? That Make that major third lead. 
Now, he does a couple other cool things in here. Um, if you go back, he's there's a flat seven, but he does this little move here. Yeah, okay, so that's a five, B flat, and then pushes the root up on both ones, so thumb and third finger. Hard for me to get it. Pushes it up, so it makes this five into, you know, I want to say it's, I want I want to say, you know, diminished, but really you can just, you can look at it as just that little, it's like that minor, that, that minor third move in here. The key is the bass has got to move. Both roots have to move. Both B flats, if you will, go to C flat, but it, I know, I know. But the way it looks is that your Bs go to C, right? Now, let's keep going, and then you'll see he throws a D in here, so it's gonna be our D flat, which is a flat seven. Right, right there. Here we go. Major pentatonic. So that's a cool step up. So don't don't sleep on that. So five. Right? Five flat six six flat seven. Very cool thing. Now you notice his licks in the beginning here, right? Sun shining, it's bright. I know the nastiness is coming later. So he's coming in with major pentatonic. Right? Yeah, so right there, right there. I know I'm starting to stop it a lot, but I want you to learn something. I want you to get excited about something, right? So it comes in with that uh, on the one, so E flat major. Goes down to the flat seven. Flat seven now, right? So you got D flat. Looks like D when he plays it. And it's all that one, three, five, six. You're, you're letting your triad up here ring out. I get the hammer on major, and there's your four. And he's doing it here. Same move works. Same move works. One, two, three, five, six, one. Down to G. Uh, so very cool, going to the flat three. And then a little rumple. Super blues, right? Going through that flat five, down to the flat three. Totally minor walk down. A little filth, a precursor probably. <laughs> Filthy. Okay, 
Okay, let's go back and get something. Natasha, great footage. You must have been on the front row. Okay. Dude switches to minor. We were major. Major, major, major. Major, major, major. When it's time to send it, Steve Ray Vaughan, Albert Kingland. Minor pentatonic. Bass switches. Uh, you outlined it before, but stays with that one flat seven, four, flat three thing. Okay? So we're settled straight into minor on the bass side, too. Now check. I'm going to give you some broad strokes here. <laughs> So, so, full send right out of the gate. Probably a vox wah. All the way down. You know, you're you're just you're ice picking that. Oh, sorry, right, right, E flat, right. Flat seven to one. Now it's all about control and muting the other strings that aren't ringing out and letting the one just bloom. It's so hard to do really. Um, controlled wah when it's full gate like this. You really have to get comfortable with the amount of power and the strings shaking and muting. So you can see, if you watch every little piece of his hand, the thumb's wrapped over, it's a full bend, but every other string is being muted by both hands, okay? And he's got his fingers on the volume knob, ready to adjust. I mean, it's only gonna go up. But in case it starts to feedback or stuff goes crazy, like that's a good spot to anchor, because um, like on strats like this, you, you're not gonna, you're not, you don't have a like a thing to anchor here. So the volume knob is like the obvious spot. You're all the way on your bridge pickup, right? Oh my God, why is YouTube so slow? So what what do you want to pay attention to there? Is let me just click this here. Maybe see it's it can make it go faster. So he's doing this. He's doing this. You know, uh, standard blues stuff, harmonically speaking. But what's cool here is you get the gate from the wah wah opening as it goes down wide open, and when it comes when it comes back up, it's wop 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 wop. So many people are used to like the auto wah kind of thing that don't play this style a lot, where like it's just always with the beat. No, 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 son, no, 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 no. It's it's it is your vocals. It, it is your vocal cord. It is your throat. Right. It's wah 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 wah. Whenever you do it, watch him open it up as he goes down. Rum, 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 rum. And now full send again. I mean, all the way open. I hit it any harder and it clicks, right? Mute everything else. Albert King land, and he's picking with his finger, right? He's doing the right. No, he's he's getting as much snap as he can. This is a full ten on a snap. Any harder than the string breaks. Um, Anybody that plays this type of stuff, one of the things that frustrates you so much is natural compression on the neck, especially with some of these, you know, fenders that just, it, it, I don't even hate to use a brand. It's, it's basically every brand. But there's a natural neck compression that happens where, like, you hit it, you hit it harder and harder and harder, and it just peaks it like an eight. It's very hard to find the right guitar and right amp combination where, it, like, as hard as you hit it is the louder and sharper it's going to be until it breaks, right? And so he's he's pushing it as hard as it can be pushed right here. And he's bending with four through the five, Albert Kingland. All you hit with those boxes. Bring it down with the vibrato. Back up again. Now right there, I love that. Lands on the root and then does something that, again, you don't typically teach people to do, but you want to point it out when someone else does it. You bend through the root. And when you bend through the root, you can't, you can't tease it like you would a four or a flat three. You got you to gotta get all the way to the nine or beyond. You got to get there. Commit. Okay. I love this little grab in here where he's 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 leaving the minor pentatonic 
and grabs that nine. When the chord goes to the flat seven, little things like that. There's always, you can keep, this is very chord cent or key centered soloing. Blues in general is a very key centered approach, uh, both, uh, both vocally and instrumentally, traditionally speaking, right? Um, but one little alteration, throw in that F sharp instead of just, when it goes over that D chord, because that F sharp is the third of D. It's a quick little nuanced thing, but it's on purpose and it counts. We're gonna lose. All right, so he goes down. This this YouTube thing is making me absolutely bananas. Okay, let me hit the button here. So you see him go down. Kind of hits that nine here too. Right? And you're gonna see him work way the way down. Oh yeah, sorry. I'm I, I keep forgetting I'm an E flat. I'm trying to show you what he's doing. Um so E flat. Remember we had the one, two, three in major? Same thing is true from the flat three in minor. So if here's your root, flat three, this one, two, three. That move also works. So he's gonna follow that straight down and then finish it with a, that same, um, you know, one flat seven, five, flat five, four, flat three blues, you know, uh, descending thing. Grabbing the five here, right? So that's a B going into your major six. Love it. Hit that flat seven, get there. There's so much to unpack in here. Okay. We'll do the best we can. Dude, Philip, you are a bad man, okay? Um, you're, you're one of the best in the entire game. I mean, I knew that, but I'm, 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 oh, baby, it's, it's happening again. I'm learning again. That's, that's the point of this channel. All right, so. Just grooving here, huge bend. Feeling the amp shake the air. That what he's doing right there, he's feeling the amp move the air. He's setting himself up for the next thing. Shoot, bending that six into the, or that, that five through the six in the flat seven right there in a different spot. Doing it here. Oh, sorry. Love that move, that butter da butter da butter Minor pentatonic using the open strings. It's not gonna work with me here, but basically his his second finger is guiding him up the third string, 
right? He's doing his best to mute other stuff, but he's also letting a little bit ring out because he's got that kind of univibe thing happening. And it, and, and all the other notes are in key anyway, right? You got the root and the fifth on the first and second string, respectively. Uh, so it doesn't matter. You can let it ride. Um, now, when he gets up here, right, he ascends into the stratosphere. And, you, and it seems like he gets, he gets lost and refines it, which is the goal which is the absolute goal of any improviser. You get to that weightless spot, and then all of a sudden you realize you're still playing, and like you're watching from the 10,000 foot view, and then like you gotta find a way to come back down and land it, like, like, like you wake up from a dream that you know you're dreaming. This, you, you're gonna witness this in real time. That, that's, this is what just happens here. I love that double stops real quick. Right? Outlining the four and the flat three major. Uh. Uh. Quick jump to the four. That, that's not the thing I'm talking about. It's the bends. So what's cool in here is I don't know if he does it on purpose or not, but he jumps up. He, right here, he's focusing on the nine and the six. And then you see him jump up. And you get the flat three and flat seven. Purposeful, not, doesn't matter. He's, he's about to go full send here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The... So, bend in that flat three, into the full four, in, into the four, and now watch it. This is this is that weightless moment. You're gonna watch him, watch it. You're gonna watch it happen. Bend in that four, right through the through the flat five there. That. Back and forth. Yeah. Right? That's that six again. See the flat seven? Do it again. It's right here. Yeah, right there. You see him catch his breath and look down? That's it. That's the moment. We'll watch it a little bit again. This this stuff is important. This reminds me of Hendrick's Band of Gypsies. I, f I forget. I think it's Vernon Reed from Living Color, during that that famous interview documentary thing, said you're watching an epiphany in real time. Something just like that. Something just like that. This watch his breath, watch his throat, and the way he bends through. I know I'm focusing all the, on all the theory. This is the stuff you can learn. This is the stuff you got to live and breathe. Okay. Watch, watch the moment where he lifts off and then he realizes he's lifted off and he's got to figure out a way to come back down. Watch his throat, watch his Adam's apple, watch him breathe. Right there, baby, right there. out to the band letting him do this Oh, were they locked in right there. 
Oh, I hate that I gotta start and stop this this much. Please go back, watch the performance without me talking and playing through it, and think of all these things that I'm trying to point out to you. Um, he starts bringing in that hybrid picking. I mean, when he when he's doing that that that, that SRV thing, which I can't do. Um, look at how he's muting with his second finger over top of the other strings to get that you know. And just he's just moving octaves around, staying in key, right? But this. Is That is a real goddamn guitar player right there. Okay, this is the stuff you live for. This, I mean, he's, when he comes back in, he, he comes right into the nine, goes into his major pentatonic spot where he started the, where he started it, right? And then he grabs a bend, the four, right, into the, into the flat seven, lets that, this, when you bend these two, you get this. You hear that overtone that comes out? You lean it towards the amp. You, I mean, you gotta have you gotta have an amp with the nuts to do this, right? But you lean it towards the amp, and that overtone starts to come out. Shakes it, you know, coerces it along with the bar. Eventually, turns around towards the amp, lets it blossom. Looks at his bandmates, and they hit it and quit it. Watch it. It is spin. Yeah, yeah, that's the real stuff right there. Philip, you're the man. Um, and oh god, Natasha, great job getting this footage. And thanks again for uh, getting this thing at the eight by ten. Uh, for all you out there, uh, blues players or whatever, um, man. Go back, watch this. Pay attention to those things that I talked about. You know, you got the, you got the, you, you got the form right. You know, you know what chords are going over it. Uh, you can see where it switches between major and minor, all that stuff. But this is all heart. It's, of course, it's for his dad that passed away suddenly. I mean, he is breathing it. I did not expect to see a weightless moment today. Those are really rare, and they're the reason. Those moments, that you saw it, it lasted like three seconds, six seconds, whatever it was. It feels like an eternity. It's like when you're in there, it's like a car crash. Like it slows down and then you come out and you're like, wow, that just happened. It's almost like you're, you're, you know, you see it in hindsight. And those moments change your life and they make you play guitar and play music for a living. That's why I do it. it it's, we are constantly chasing those fleeting weightless moments. And, and you just saw Philip share that with us. Awesome, 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 awesome. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you dig the vibe of this channel, live music, uh, hit the subscribe button. It really helps. Please like, please share it with your friends. And if you want to take my lessons and courses, that's how I make a living. I'm an online teacher. I make courses. I got a beginner blues course, a blues fundamentals course. It shows all this stuff that I'm talking about step by step. You're still going to have to work on this, right? But all the nuts and bolts, I got you. It's the first link in the description. I'd love to have you. That's it. Cheers. Dude, he's so good.